The H1B guy here, and today, the H1B guy news for the week ending August 6th, 2021. Today, I'll cover more documented Dreamer coverage, Chakrabadi v. USCIS, and H2B worker shortage. But before we get started, I'd like to ask you, if you haven't already, to please subscribe to the H1B Guy channel here on YouTube and like this video so that I can continue to produce more content like this for you. I also wanted to mention the H1B Guy offers a variety of consulting services. I help businesses and individuals solve complex work authorization issues and the recruitment process while bringing awareness to employment-based immigration benefits. If I can help you, please reach out. I'd love to hear how. Today's news is brought to you by RecruiterNetworks.com, the smart solution for digital perm ads and local job postings since 2001. By Path to Canada, the ideal plan B for high-skilled immigrants currently located in the U.S. whose status may be uncertain. And by perm-ads.com, the industry leader in providing a seamless experience for employers and immigration attorneys navigating the complex perm recruitment ad phase of the labor certification process. Now, the news. I want to say thanks to everyone who checked out the H-1B Guy Live on Wednesday, August 4th, 2021, where I covered the results from the H-1B survey and the impact of the travel ban uh, from the H-1B survey that was conducted by my friend Dr. Nina Gopalan at the University of Redlands. If you haven't had a chance, please check out that video. There's some really interesting data that I shared. But here's what interested me most this week. August 1st, 2021, by Hafsa Fatima for NPR, titled, They Came to the U.S. as Children, But at 21, Their Legal Status Runs Out. Quote, Parine Matre and her parents were born in India. They face an extensive backlog that's particular to applicants born in India or China. That's because the U.S. caps employment-based green cards at a certain amount every year and grants them by country of birth. Each country is usually granted 7% of the available green cards in a single year. A majority of the applicants from India or China, according to the data from the Cato Institute, uh, that waits for these applicants to be stretched into decades with dependents like Matre aging out of their status before their green card applications are approved. Matre's parents can keep renewing their work visas until they receive permanent residency, but Matre's situation works differently. Because I've aged out, I may not be eligible when it's my family's turn to receive their green cards, she says. She's not sure how much longer they'll have to wait. Well, of course, many of you know Perrine Matre, and she's a friend of the H-1B guy and has appeared on the Documented Dreamer series twice to share her story and advocacy efforts. Both Perrine and Deep from ImproveTheDream.org are cited in this article written by my friend Hafsa with NPR. I think Hafsa did an excellent job of painting the picture of the plight of documented dreamers and the root cause of the issue. On August 2nd, 2021, written by Jonah Kaplan for ABC 11 WTVD TV, this is home. Children of legal immigrants in North Carolina fear deportation when they turn 21. Quote, Preeti Kandori has lived in Wake County longer than many of her neighbors moving here from the Northeast. I moved to Morrisville, North Carolina when I was six years old and now I'm 20, Kandori said. My whole life has been here. This is my home. While the America's Children Act would undoubtedly provide relief for many immigrant families like Kandori's, the issue of documented dreamers also provokes discussion about the broader issue of permanent resident status in America and the growing difficulty for families, even those who have been here for decades, to get a green card. The fact that the green card backlog is decades long, it has to be addressed, Patel said. This is one of the root causes. Excellent coverage from ABC 11 and RTP, uh, interviewing Representative Deborah Ross, uh, Preeti, and Deep for this piece. I wanted to make sure it was highlighted and emphasized that Deep is on record here as saying that the green card backlog is one of the root causes of this issue. 
Of course, the backlog is created by the 7% quota on country of birth for employment-based preferences, and that is something that Improve the Dream has consistently referenced and even mentioned in the previous article written by my friend Hafsa with NPR. On August 2nd, 2021, in a tweet from Greg Siskind, quote, Happy to report we just filed Chakrabadi v. USCIS and Urjadu challenging the expected loss of 100,000 green cards due to delays in adjudicating employment-based adjustment applications. In addition to seeking the immediate adjudication of our 125 plaintiffs, we are also asking a judge to order USCIS to reserve all of the available visas no visa numbers so they actually get used and not wasted. You know, last week during the H-1B Guy News for the week ending July 30th, 2021, I stated, quote, simply put, this is a humanitarian issue that's going to require both legislative and executive action. I'm also expecting a lawsuit to be filed against USCIS due to the wastage, and it will be announced sometime in the next few months. I'll admit that I expected a lawsuit was forthcoming, but I had no idea it would be filed in less than a week from me making that comment. Really interested to see where this lawsuit is going to go. As I tweeted on Wednesday that the scandal, as referenced by my friend David Beer, uh, really is a humanitarian crisis uh, for high-skilled legal immigrants that are stuck in this backlog. On August 3rd, 2021, Pat Patricia Cohen and Sidney Ember for the U New York Times via Yahoo News uh, in an article titled, Lack of Foreign Workers Has Seasonal Businesses Scrambling. Quote, the Biden administration responded to frantic pleas from small businesses in the spring. It did not redo a uh, renew a pandemic-related suspension of the J-1 program, which provides short-term visas designated for foreign students who come to the U United States to work and travel. Soon after, it raised a quota on temporary visas under the H-2B program for temporary non-agricultural workers, which are issued through a lottery. But travel restrictions, backlogs, and delays at foreign consulates and the approving applicants have still left businesses from Maine to California in the lurch. The war on human capital very clearly continues, but this time primarily focused in the H-2B non-agricultural space. The common theme here, however, are travel bans, backlogs, and delays at foreign consulates. If I didn't know better, I would have assumed that we were referring to H-1B visas. Where's the breaking point? And it feels to me like 2022 is certainly more and more likely for a return to normal for temporary foreign workers of all statuses. For the full post on the H-1B Guy News for the week ending August 6, 2021, please check out the H-1BGuy.com. And a reminder that today's news was brought to you by RecruiterNetworks.com, the smart solution for digital perm ads and local job postings since 2001. This national job board network provides recruitment websites in 1,024 major U.S. metro areas. Each local job board is its own portal and is a low-cost resource for immigration recruitment ads and local job postings for all industries and professions with a flat price of $225 per ad or $1,000 per month regardless of which city you choose. RecruiterNetworks.com. Tell them the H-1B guy sent you. And by Path to Canada. Path to Canada provides an ideal plan B for high-skilled immigrants currently located in the U.S. whose status may be uncertain. If you're facing an H-1B denial or OPT expiration, don't get caught off guard. Make sure you have a plan B and Path to Canada is your answer. They will gladly help you navigate the process. And if you're interested in finding out more, please be sure to use the link in the video description below. The news is also brought to you by perm-ads.com, the industry leader in providing a seamless experience for employers and immigration attorneys navigating the complex perm recruitment ad phase of the labor certification process. If you want to reduce your costs and overhead associated with perm labor certification recruitment advertising, let perm-ads.com help you. Just wanted to ask you again to please like this video, 
subscribe to the H1B Guy channel here on YouTube and click the bell for notifications so that you're notified anytime we post new content here to this channel. If you've made it this far, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate your support. The H1B Guy, your global source for all things H1B.